Latino community in East Tennessee is pretty new, very fast growing, and that brings a lot of challenges to everyone. When you live in a community where it's very homogeneous, having to be confronted with something as different as a language or a culture can be a switch that you're not comfortable with necessarily. One of the big barriers that we have is language services in healthcare settings. Especially East Tennessee is not set up to serve an immigrant community that speaks Spanish. And so that can create a real barrier for people to truly understand what's happening, to be diagnosed appropriately, and then to get better. Cuando yo me moví aquí al sur, yo oía muchas cosas. Y sí, lo he comprobado que hay mucho racismo con los latinos y con la gente de color. Mi hija, cuando ella entró aquí a Knoxville a la escuela, ella sufrió mucho de rechazo. Niños de kindergarten, a ella le decían que se regresara a su país, que solamente aquí se hablaba inglés. Camilo, saca la carne, por favor, para hacer los tacos. Es una gran barrera para el idioma para podernos expresar con otras personas. Con su cara. Hace un año que me diagnosticaron diabetes. Sí he tenido experiencias de ir al doctor y no poderme expresar con él. Yo me sentía muy estresada porque las palabras de los doctores son importantes. Fue mucho la experiencia de sentirnos muy solos. Terminé rápido porque yo tengo la cita con el doctor y voy a tener nuevo intérprete. Esperemos que, uh, que sea linda. It happens very often in our healthcare system that you aren't an interpreter, but you get pulled in anyway. Our bilingual young folks have been doing this their entire lives. Hey, pa, vamos que tenemos que llamar al doctor. Acuérdate que mañana tienes la cita con él. A ver qué nos dice. In a medical setting, the responsibility of interpreting for such sensitive things is really a challenge. How do we take that experience and then try to design and develop solutions that could be sustainable? Hour before your scheduled appointment. Growing up in Venezuela was really nice, but everything changed. So I need to move, I need to run or die, basically because close friends were kidnapped. We don't have food. So yeah, my family and I will apply for an asylum to be safe here. When I first came to US, I knew how to say just a few words. I was so scary and I was like, okay, now what? ¿Te acuerdas cuando tú me estabas enseñando inglés? Bueno, yo recuerdo era que ay papá que no pasa inglés, que no entiendo, que no entiendo, no entiendo. Y después cuando estuvimos en, en, en migración y hablaste por primera vez que yo sepa inglés allí y te entendieron y pudimos entrar aquí. Y te lo logré. Ah. Ah. I've been interpreting for my dad and my mom since we are here. I'm proud right now because I can help. However, I didn't realize that I can do this for a living. Centro Hispano is an educational organization and our big vision, we want to see our community thrive culturally, educationally, and economically. And the medical interpreter program really ties all those values into one. How are you? How are you? Hola a todos. Today we're going to be practicing our ethics. We were trying to figure out what other options are there for young people that can't afford to go to school, but they can use the skills that they already have, right? How do we celebrate who you already are and that value you can bring to the community? That's how the Medical Interpreter Program was dreamed up. Because we need to say everything that patient is, is saying. The classes were amazing, very dynamic. We learned how to be professional, but at the same time, be a human and a support for somebody who came to this place and I can be the bridge. Their care is of your best interest and for everyone's best interest in this situation. There is a lot more at stake with medical interpreting that requires you advocating for them. Having been that kid that had to interpret for my dad, it made me want to help out other families that might be having a pretty awful day. So it's a great feeling to know that you made their day a little better. We knew we were going to need partners so that students could do internships. Hola, buenas Hola, tardes. Buenas tardes. Soy Sofía. Soy el intérprete para hoy. Okay, está bien. Gracias. Our students served 524 patients and over 785 hours of free medical interpreting. 
In this career, I really like the human touch. Being there and see their faces. When you say, hey, I'm the interpreter, then they feel more secure. Sí. That feeling is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have words to describe. <laughs> So how have you been since you were here last? Entonces, ¿cómo ha estado desde la última vez que vino? Cuando yo visité por primera vez un médico que me dio este, intérpretes, yo me sentí más relajada. Yo me sentí con más confianza de expresar todo lo que yo sentía. Entonces, ya me siento más acogidos aquí. What does it look like when you truly create something for your own community? You feel home. You feel like you belong. Our values as an organization are Latinidad, Comunidad, and Corazón. And Latinidad is the acknowledgement that we are many types of Latinos. I love it. It's so nice. Is that cool? Yeah. Can I get a high five? Comunidad is our community, right? Like all of us together working so that we can support each other. In Corazón, which is not about a heart, this is about fire, because for us it was about the determination our community has to continue to thrive, to continue to live who we are as people while we come into a community where so few people look like us. We don't want to assimilate, we want to integrate. And that means we're going to keep our culture, we're going to keep our language, we're going to keep our traditions, and that will only add enrichment to the community as a whole. It's not about being apologetic or asking for permission, it's taking the space that's ours. Queso cheese! We're going to go here!